Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We are live in the fact. We are back, coach. We are back. We are back. Can you believe that? On a Sunday, baby. On a Sunday. Special, special, special show. Championship Sunday. Hold on. Let me make sure this is... What the hell? I got this play. Oh, yeah. Definitely Championship Sunday. Uh, Want to get that straight behind me, but... Right now, right now. Okay, okay, okay. We got we got coach of the building, so hopefully everything is good. We are ready to rock and roll, baby. We are ready to rock and roll. Welcome, welcome, welcome to High School Basketball Weekly. I am your host, Glenn Poo Harding, with my guy, Brian Riker. And it's all about the South Bronx. Uh-huh. South, South Bronx, South Bronx. South, South Bronx. All my people from the South Bronx, make some noise. Get them fire emojis. Put them thumbs up. Because we got South Bronx preps on. Hey, coach. One of the most dynamic head coaches in the city. Paul, Radar, Campbell, and I call him Mr. Bucket himself. <laughs> Sir Patrick Livingston is in the building, baby. Let's go. Coach, coach, yo, I love that intro. That intro get me going all the time. Salute to my guy, super producer, FX, for that track, man. It, it, it just fits so well, man. It fits so well. Salute to my guy, AB Money, always holding me down. Platinum recording artist and all that. But <laughs> today, today, today we heading up to the boogie down where hip hop started. All right? And, you know, we got... Told you one of the most dynamic coaches on today and one of the most creative bucket getters of all of New York City. And and I got some things to say to him as well because did did for y'all that don't know, do y'all know that? Sir Patrick Livingston is one of the finalists for basketball heads player of the year. Did y'all know that? Did y'all know that? Make some noise. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. So without further ado, let's bring him on the show. Go. All right. <laughs> coach, coach, coach. Mr. Patrick, what's happening? What's up, coach? What's going on? What's going on? How you guys doing today? How you guys doing today? Good in yourself. Pretty good. Pretty good. Man, listen, I, we're so happy to have you guys here today uh, on, on a busy Sunday. I know it's a lot going on. I know it's a lot you got to prepare for, but I want to say thank you for joining us here today. All right? So I, I, I want to jump this off, then, you know, Coach B, a, a follow me on, on what we have to say to you guys boy, and, and ask you guys. So, you know, with the boys and girls having their fair share of championship wins, right, on South Bronx, what is the culture like? Like, what kind of culture are you guys building up there? Like, what is the culture between like student body and staff to make everything work? Um, <clears throat> I mean, the culture is pretty much a family atmosphere. Um, I like to bring um, you know, a lot of energy, and um, we like to promote the sports programs, not only just basketball, but we like to promote all the sports programs in the school. So they know how passionate we are about you know, the sports that we, that we coach. So, you know, just, um, keeping all our student body involved, um, keeping the teachers involved, keeping our staff involved, keeping the administration involved in what we, uh, 
our plans and stuff that we want to build and continue building with our sports programs um and just having our ad and everybody supporting us and having our back when we come up with these ideas to to, to build the culture in the school or the you know family culture and, and about winning and working hard and how it can resonate in every sport not just basketball now that's cool nice. that's cool yeah it's it's a great answer coach uh you guys are definitely building a great, you know culture over there program and I love that you want everyone to come up with you guys as you guys rise. But talk to us a little bit about how special this uh, this year's group has been and how much adversity they've had to overcome to get here. Um, I mean, this 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 group is special in, in many ways because like I told like I tell a lot of people, this this group is 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 different from what I'm used to, meaning I'm usually, I usually, you know, our school is a six to 12 school, um, you know, high academics, 94, 97% graduation rate. So academics is, you know, the main force in our school. So the sports program obviously is something that, you know, the basketball team is something that I've, I've built. I've, I've spent a lot of time passionate on it. And, um, you know, the academics is what really drives the school. So all of the, the things you see with the sports and the, the, the basketball, you know, I, I kind of started that with my basketball program and then we, you know, spread it out everywhere else. But um, so as far as having, I, so I'm used to having kids from middle school. So I would coach middle school, chance leave, and our kids will come up from middle school, stay in high school. And I'll, I'll, they'll already be with me for three years in middle school, yeah. six, seven, and eighth. And by the time they get to high school, they're ready to play. So I don't, you know, for me, it's just pretty much just coming from our school. I don't get the kids that the basketball guys that come from out, outside of the school to transfer in and come to the school. And, you know, so I don't have that luxury as many other schools have. So, you know, I'm really do- building it from the ground up from the kids that I have in the building, whether they like basketball, love basketball, or don't know nothing about basketball. Those are the, those are the resources of the kids that I'm dealing with. Yeah. But, um, th- you know, th- this, this group, I have a lot of one year, two year players, like guys that, you know, were able to transfer in, you know, guys who found me, um, heard about my program, um, know me through other people, um, and they they found their way in our school. So for Sir Patrick, for instance, you know, he came last year. Um, so I didn't have him for four years. I didn't have the luxury of having him for four years or seven years, right, coming through middle school. Yeah. So this is new for me, you know what I'm saying? Um, I have I have three kids like that that came last year. And and they're all seniors now, and they play an integral part in what we're doing. So, but it hasn't been easy because those guys gotta they gotta learn Coach Campbell. They gotta learn, you know, Cougar basketball. They gotta learn, you know, the principles. You know, the things that we do here. They gotta learn, you know, student athlete. You know yeah. what it takes to be in the classroom, study hall every day, uh, staying after school, late hours, uh, working one on one with your teachers, being with Coach Campbell for long hours of the day um and then practicing six days a week you know watching film so they got to learn all that and then learn my system <clears throat> and then learn how hard i coach and you know what i expect um and the developmental process you know developing kids um from all talent levels you know what i'm saying so it's a lot to learn in just two years or one year you know what i'm saying so sure. uh, this group is special because a lot of them had to like learn it on the fly and kind of kind of buy into my system rather quickly and yeah. i would and i can honestly say that as the season went on to where we're at now like the playoffs and then to the championship I've, I've seen it manifest even more as of late so you know they say better late than never right so yeah that's that's why this one is sweet because a lot of the kids you know they come from different backgrounds everywhere and they're not my usual south Bronx prep kids yeah no doubt, no doubt. Awesome, Sir Patrick. We, we gonna we gonna stay on the academic, and we'll get to the ball later. Like, what is your favorite subject, and why? My favorite subject is, I'm gonna say, economics, because I like learning about the past and what happened, and how we could learn from the past and develop. So, Economics is important because that's a numbers game right there. So if you want to learn how to manage your money and, and do the things you need to do and learn about what's going on in the economy, 
that that's definitely gonna work and i think we can learn from the past right if you study the past you can kind of figure out what's going to happen in the future because history kind of repeats itself right yes sir yeah and uh could, could you also talk a little bit about um you know, your transition into a program that really does put an emphasis on academics um and kind of your adjustment process you know, as a young young student athlete who, you know, definitely wants to take care of the athletic side, but now you really got an obligation to be a better student. And talk about kind of how you've adjusted to that uh, in the in this uh, Bronx prep program. Um, I adjusted to it pretty quick, you know, because at SBP, like Coach said before, we all like a family. So whenever we need help with something, it's always help around the school whether it's from the coach himself, teachers, and students. So I just got comfortable, built a bond with them, and anytime I need help with something, I know who to go to and where to go. That's great. Now, I think that's that's a, an important culture to have, right? Because sometimes kids could be in a situation where they feel like they're on the island by themselves. And I think that's where uh, kids can really struggle at if they don't really feel like they could go to anyone for help and he, he he said coach staff and students yeah right everybody. so you putting everybody the whole family gets involved man that's awesome that's awesome coach how this year been for you uh thus far from the last few years in the past because you guys won at 18 and 19 right and then you kind of yeah. had to rebuild the ship and get these guys going for this year what was those that gap years, what was that like in between building it and getting back to the championship? Um, it was, it was not, I went, it was a little difficult. Um, first, so after we won in 1819, um, had a, a player named Steven Turner. So he was a sophomore at the time. So we came back the next year. Um, we lost Jordan Azumang was a major part of um he was all first team um yep. so we lost him we lost tristan kennedy we lost a bunch of guys um a bunch of seniors but i had i still had a lot of youth so steven turner was the mvp and he was a sophomore so he was coming back in his junior year so i still felt very confident with someone like him leading the team um and so we go into that year um, this it was a rough year because of this. We this year we didn't our gym was getting redone, mm. so this is the time we didn't have no gym. That's so funny. I want to give a special shout out to Stevenson High School because those guys opened the doors up for me and my team to come over there and practice. So I would travel from South Bronx Prep on a, on Third Ave, 145th, all the way to Stevenson over there by you know White Plains, um, and the Soundview area. So we would travel every day and use the gym over there. And we played our, our home games there as well. So wow. that year was, it was pretty tough because we had, we still had study hall, but we have study hall and then have to travel an hour, 45 minutes to get to Stevenson just a to practice. Game. And then, huh? For a home game. Yeah. 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 For a home game. And then our practices were there. So we didn't have our gym for a whole year. So that year was, it was, you know, a lot of, a lot of setbacks in that year, but we were still able to get to the, Elite Eight, Final Four, right before this is the year COVID happened, right? Am I am I correct? Where it ended where it ended right at the end, yeah. So you know we got to the Elite Eight, we played against Summit. Summit was pretty good that year, yeah. and then um um shout out to Phil Grant, and then we ended up playing those guys and we lost at the buzzer, crazy by two at the buzzer, and then right after that's when COVID happened. So you know the season never ended. Um, and then going into the next year, we didn't have a season. My school opted out. So some people played, you know, the, you know, the partial season thing that they was doing. Yeah. So, yeah. And that, that might've been, I ain't gonna lie. might've been my most depressing years. Like just dealing with the fact that there's, I can't, there's no games, you know, we're not doing anything, but I supplemented that by starting my training. So I started on the radar training during that time um just training kids working out outside in the park we didn't have a season so it was just like 
the kids were buying into it. Um, you know, Elijah Avila was uh one of my um stars that stuck with me the whole time. Just trained, got better. And then um then we come back the next year. Um Steven Turner ends up transferring. Um and then um now I have you know, Eli's left and then a lot of young kids. So now it's a real young group. And I'm like, I don't know how I'm going to do it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm just, you know, we we already didn't have a whole year. Eli was booming, but he didn't get to play a whole year. So now it's like he missed a whole year of playing basketball on a competitive level. But um, so we come back that year. I think we get to, like, the Sweet 16 or something. I think we lose to uh, Chow. Um, school, there's another school we had lost to. By two points, right? So these are these are games that we're all in. We have a chance to keep advancing, yeah. but you know, we um we come up short. So those years were, you know, a little rough, but it was good because, you know, kids were dealing with adversity as well. And it showed a lot about um, you know, how how the program could still be successful through with all the setbacks and, you know, things that would um hinder a lot of other programs. So I was just proud of the way we handled ourselves through adversity. And then um we bounced and then the year last year, um, Sir Patrick's here. Um, he comes into school, he comes in and helps right away. I got a couple other kids that come in. Um, we're having a pretty good season, you know, still learning. These guys are fresh, so it's still new to them. And then we hit a hard we hit a bump in the road. Um, Sir Patrick um hit a bump in the road with one of his classes. Um, struggled with one of his classes, ended up doing everything he had to do, turned into work, and the teacher, you know, pretty much didn't accept it at the time. I guess it was, you know, you know, to get, you know, give him a lesson or whatever the case was. But, um, you know, that was a rough time because it was around play, it was right at playoff time, and it was our first game of the season, a playoffs. Um, and we go and we lose that game in the first round, which I've never done in my coaching um, career at SBP. So that one hit hard. It was rough. Um, but I think it was, you know, it was it was some humbling, of course, for Sir Patrick to understand that, you know, academics are obviously the most important thing. We have to stay on top of it. Even if we get behind it, we have to always be on top of it because we cannot expect um, people to just say, all right, you can turn in now, right? So granted, he did the work. Granted, he did what he had to do. But it wasn't on time, right? So it was a lesson that was um, proven to him. And that's, again, that's the staple of my my school. Um, academics is at the top charts, right? So if you're late, you're not you're not on time and stuff, they're pretty harsh on, on you know, especially with the athletes. I, I can definitely say that. So, um, so but that, that day, that day, it, it taught Sir Patrick a lesson. And it also, like, humbled them. Because, you know, we downstairs... We lose that game. He's crying in my arms. He said, okay, I'm sorry. I owe you one. And I told him, listen, I owe you. You know what I'm saying? I owe you. We're going to make sure we get it done next year. You stay on top of your stuff, and I promise you, we're going to come home winning next year. And I called it. He called it. But to see him cry, to see those tears, and understand how passionate he was about doing better, and um, he was upset that he let his team down, it showed me that he was going to be this type of player this year that y'all see right now. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, he, I think he's truly awakened the beast. And he's been fantastic this season at the top of almost every statistic that you can imagine. Can you, coach, can you just can you just tell us uh and you know, all of our listeners and any college coaches paying attention how good of a season Sir Patrick really has had this year because he's been fantastic. Listen. If if you even watch the kid play, if you even been to a game, you know those numbers that you see on PSL, those legit. The kid, the kid can score in every facet of the game. A very special talent. Um, plays the game at a high level, high motor, um, super passionate about it. And the fact is, he puts in the work. So it's not just roll out a ball and let him play. The kid loves the work. So that's the best part about it. Um, but he's every bit of those numbers y'all see online. He can get it in any facet. So what he's doing right now is amazing. And again, I tell people, doesn't matter the classification, doesn't matter the levels, because 
I've had a kid named Taquan Rucker who's done the same thing in my program. I had a kid named Alisa Mare who's done the same thing. I had a kid, Jordan Ajimang, he's done the same thing. Um, you know, Elijah Avila, like, but again, even when we play the four A's, the three A's, he's putting up 50, he's putting up 40, he's putting up 30 respectfully. So, um, he's a, he's a very talented scorer and, a, and one hell of a player and even better person. To all those people, all those new people that just came on the show, uh, I like everyone to do me a favor hit that subscribe button, hit that subscribe button. This is for New York City, right? Coach and I, we, we put in a lot of hard work to make sure that these kids get and coaches get noticed uh, for the hard work that they put in. So please make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, share this content. And one shout out I like to give real quick, right? Because yesterday, I, you know, while everybody was, uh, home tucked in the house you know i was out moving and shaking the way i do and i stopped at this restaurant called trini girl right just want to give a shout out real quick trini girl is on uh, 628 Noston avenue between dean street and pacific street dean street and pacific street let me tell you the best doubles in the world the best caribbean food in the world i told him i would give him a shout out because the owner Miss Trini girl himself, herself, she was so sweet, so kind. They gave me a few free free items because of the dialogue that we exchanged with each other. So this is the kind of thing we have to do for each other. Um, she came here with forty dollars, her and her husband, and they're on their way to building an empire. So salute to Trini girl because hard work do pay off, right, Sir Patrick? That's coach. That's right. That's right. All right. So how has coach? prepared you for like the double teams and the boxing ones because i know you've seen it all right they have two guys holding you uh, they bumping and pushing on you how has coach helped you in all of those situations they just kept telling me reggie miller keep running because in practice we run a whole lot to prepare for stuff like this so just running and telling me watch reggie miller <clears throat> reggie miller see how he moved around the own um, double teams and i just took heed to that and every time i get double team i just keep running around the court till they get tired went by on a lot of screens and that's how i really get through it i love that listen coach i'm watching them on the court and i'm saying to myself damn this kid look tired and then when you think he look tired he he comes, he runs off like a number eight or nine points real quick. And I'm saying to myself, is this guy playing mind games with the other team? <laughs> Listen, the, the, the kid is a magician. You know why? Because he knows when to use his uh <laughs> he knows when to use his uh <laughs> all his um energy, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but um but <laughs> but again, uh like you said, man, we we do I'm I'm big on conditioning, I'm big on strength and conditioning. Um, so that's, that's the forefront of our workouts and practice every day. Um, so I tell guys, you know, we got to be in the best shape because there's four quarters of the game. There may be times in the, in the game where we may fall off, but we got to be the last one that has the most energy in the fourth quarter to be able to withstand anything that anyone throws to us. And I know for a fact, all of my teams are more conditioned than a large percentage of teams that we play. So I know at least with that, we always got a shot to win games. Um, and yeah, you know, so Patrick has, again, once again, he's a hard worker. So the hard work that he puts in the gym, you know, being in practice every day, pushing himself, pushing his teammates, um, encouraging his teammates to, to, to work hard. It just shows in the games, especially when we need them the most. Uh, that That's a great point, coach. And you guys are doing absolutely phenomenal. Um, Coach, another thing you got to do is you got to watch Steph Curry at Davidson tape. I mean, doubled nonstop, Sir Patrick. You'd get a total kick out of that. Um, and I got to tell you, it's preparing you for the next level. You look at a lot of guys, like, you know, a lot of the guys who went to smaller schools, they learned how to kind of deal with different defenses, and it really unlocks the potential as a scorer. Can you talk, Sir Patrick, about some of your teammates 
who really helped, uh, you know, you become this kind of superstar and have kind of let you uh, do your thing this season? Um, I just wanted to shout out one of my teammates, Xavier and Melvin, because they have a lot of trust in me and they know because we talk on and off the court about this. like, And they really trust me. So when I say, oh, stand here, do this and that, they believe that I know what I'm talking about. So we just, like, I don't know, like, we just have a good connection. So they just know, like, and sometimes when we're in games and it's, we at that, that, that bottom, we, we talk to each other and, like, we tell each other, like, it's time to heat up and let's go. And we just, we just keep going and we give it everything we got. We just don't give up. Yeah, Coach, tell me a little bit more about uh, Xavier and, and some of the other guys on the team that kind of help this whole machine go because we know it's just not uh, Sir Patrick Livingston. You guys have a whole team and guys that come off the bench that, that make things happen. Yeah, I mean, again, my, my team, everyone plays a role on my team. So we may see Sir Patrick in the bright lights. He may stand out to the world, you know, because of the points and, you know, watching him play. But the team, this team ain't as good as it is without Xavier Azuman, uh, the brother of Jordan Azuman, um, who, you know, versatile, 6'5", six, 6'6", six, six, wing that can shoot it, shoot the mid-range, put it on the floor, um, finish at the rim. Um, very creative. Um, then we have uh, Melvin, big Melvin, a big statue down there. Six, six, oh, yes. You know, yes. big, strong, you know, kid that act, came from nowhere. You know what I'm saying? Like, he came from playing soccer. And I, and I had to chase him down in middle school to play because he was bigger than everybody, and he yeah. ignored me. He would not come. He would not play basketball. He had no interest at all. Amazing. Ninth grade, ninth grade comes. I'm like, yo, Xavier. I, him and Xavier are in the same class. I'm like, Xavier, you got to bring him. He's like, I'm going to try, but he don't want to play basketball. I said, listen, I don't care what he want to do. He's going to play basketball for me. So you're going to bring him to the next tryout. So, he, you know, he brought him in ninth grade. Um, Melvin was out of shape. He was heavy, um, lazy. Uh, so, you know, we really, like, he really transformed. Like, he's one of my proudest stories in the school um, the past few years because of just the work. Like, he didn't want to play, wasn't a basketball player, and I, and I really put a lot of effort and trust and, and work into him to, to you know, put to bring, get him where he's at. So in 10th grade, he was unplayable. That's what I used to tell him. You're unplayable, bro. Like, you have to sit at the end of the bench, mad big, like, at, like, 6'4". Yeah. You can't play, bro. Then you know he took heed to that. Eleventh grade last year, he was he wasn't good at all. Like people used to be like, "Why is he playing?" Like he's mad big for nothing. You know they clowning him, and I'm like, "Nah, watch this. I'm gonna get him." So he vowed to me that he wanted to play now. Now he's serious. Can't I'm gonna work out with you. So he started. He 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 stood on that. In the summers, I do my on the radar training in the Bronx and Starlight Park. Um, for anybody who's interested, I'm out there every morning, Monday through Friday, 7 to 11 o'clock in the morning. We run the track. We do push-ups. We do the heavy rope. We do sit-ups. We do sprints. We're doing all calisthenics. I'm working out, too, mind you. This ain't, I'm just not standing there directing. I'm out there doing the work, too. So the kids get to see that if I'm doing it, y'all definitely can do it. Because I'm doing it just because I love to do it. I'm doing it to stay in shape. Y'all doing it for a career. Most of y'all still playing sports, so y'all want to do this to play and, 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 you know, level up. But Melvin came to me every day that year. I promise you, every day that summer. And he worked his butt off. When I say worked, the body that you see now, you wouldn't have recognized that two years ago. So he stretched out. He got slimmer. He got stronger. He got leaner. And he, he lost about 80 pounds in just a year. So... So watch it. So what you see now is, you know, him still developing. He couldn't make a layup last year. Now he's, you know, he still has his times where he's working around the rim. But you've seen him in a championship game. He looked like he couldn't be stopped. He eat yeah. up rebounds. He eat yeah. up rebounds. Oh, like yeah. Anybody he's, miss, he's grabbing it and putting it right back up. Yes. And we made that an emphasis all throughout training. So 
someone like him watching his development and how important he is on the team, giving us second chance opportunities, you know, defending, walling up, keeping guys off the rim, keeping guys off the rebounding, getting second chance opportunities for guys like Sir Patrick, Xavier. Um, you know, he's very instrumental to what we got going on. We have Tristan Bowen. He showed up yesterday, last in the in, I mean the day before in a big game that we played against um um the one A champions. He showed up big time, right? Then you got Chase, Chase Perez, great defender, you know, very unselfish on offense, always looking to pass. I, I tell him you got to shoot more, <laughs> you know, you got to shoot more. But the, my kids hang their hat high on defense because they know how, how much I emphasize it. And they always want to please me so they know what they got to do to stay on that court. <laughs> but right, right, right down the line, guys, man, you got, I got Fahim, sophomore. You know, a lacrosse star. I got Cisse. He came, Muhammad Cisse, number 20, a lacrosse star, sophomore. He's one of our premier defenders. Gives us everything, energy, defense, attitude. He gives it all. Um, He leaves it on the court. Got Bryce Smalls, a senior. Wears his hat, wears his emotions on his, on, on his shoulders. Wants to give it all he got every time he get on the court, like, I mean, the list goes on, man. I can name every player and what they bring to the table. But, you know, these guys, these guys really, they believe, they trust me, and they're willing to do anything it takes to be successful. Man, I absolutely killed that coach, and you guys are doing fantastic. Um, Pooh, you got anything else? I mean, these guys are great. Yeah, yeah, I got I got a few more. I got a few Go more. Go um, Sir Patrick. Knowing that you're from the BX, right? I didn't know you come all the way down to Brooklyn to work with my guy Ricky Rivers. <laughs> Salute to Coach Ricky Rivers and everything you do, uh, man. That that just tell me a lot about you, right? Because you you getting it from Coach, and then you going down, coming down to BK, and you get putting in that extra work. Uh, how has that helped you? Uh, throughout the year and, and in your transition and become one of the top scorers in the city? It helped me a lot. Like, with Ricky Rivers, I met him at my old school because he was a teacher at my old school. So we used to work out in my old school every day, 7 in the morning until 8, 15. So that's when I used to start class. And we was just working and working. And he talked to the head coach at Canarsie and he was sending him film. One day we was in the gym and then he told me to come. I believe it was a Saturday around 10 or 11. So I was like, all right, I went. The coach had liked how I played and I fit in with the team. So he ended up inviting me to a game they had later that day in Gauchos. So I went. I did what I had to do. He liked the confidence and he wanted me to go. I was originally supposed to go to Canarsie, but my mom was like, it's too far. She ain't with me traveling too late in Brooklyn. So it didn't really work out. And then from a close friend of mine's, I met, he introduced me to Radar and I met Radar like that. And I was just working out with Radar and I just got a bond with him. And then after that, it's when I transferred to South Bronx Prep because it was closer to my mom, to my house because my mom ain't want me to go too, too far. No, nah, that's, that's solid. And for, and I'm gonna tell you what kind of guy that Coach Ricky Rivers is. He's such a good guy, right? That he pushed and, and he still supports you because, you know, he hit me, he was like, Yo, you got to get my guys on the show, pool. Like, you got to get them, you know, some pub, man. Like, I said, yo, they on the list to come on the show, Rick. Trust me, I just got to reach out to them. He said, nah, I'm going to call the right for you right now. Right? You don't find too many guys like that in the city because guys usually, you know, they get selfish. And they, if they can't have the player, they figure nobody can have them. So salute to my guy, Ricky River, for everything that you do for the city. And shout out to Fun Sport and Canarsie High School. That's a that's a fact, Paul. Let me just let me just reiterate that. Special mm -hmm. shout out to Ricky Rivers. Um, you know, from the beginning, you know, I didn't even know how close him and Sir Patrick was until like maybe like a month ago or a couple weeks ago. He had told me 
about that he was his old teacher, you know, and then he's, you know, he knew him before. Cause in the beginning of the year, he was, he was hitting me up like, yo, Radar, yo, yo, y'all gotta play Brooklyn Lawn Tech. Y'all gotta, you know, I wanna see my boy St. Patrick. I'm like, all right, bet. So we ended up playing Brooklyn Lawn Tech, non league early in the year. Great game. Shout outs, I mean, to Kenny and him over there. Yeah. Um, but he was always supporting uh, Pat from the beginning. And then um, throughout the season, you know, he kept reaching out, checking in on Pat. And, um, you know, so I know I, I definitely knew about um, Pat being over there, having a relationship and bond with him. And, um, you know, Ricky, I've known Ricky beforehand. So just him tapping in with me, showing love, supporting, and, um, you know, always supporting me and to Pat throughout this process. Huge shout out to him, man. It, it, it definitely tells you what type of guy he is. Um, and just like you said, most people, if they have a kid in the beginning, they'll act like, nah, that's my kid. <laughs> but he definitely is not like that. He's like, Radar, you got him? Take care of him, bro. Like, make sure he good, and I'm going to do what I could do on my end. So it's a team effort. It's, it's collaborative. And, um, yeah. And then quickly about how Pat was brought to me was a, a young man that I used to help or basketball and the neighborhood that, you know, Sir Patrick is from. I've done a lot in that neighborhood. So obviously, you know, the dude reached out to me and was like, Radar, I got this kid. This kid is talented, man, but I know you're the only person that I know on my side that could get him to the next level. He's that good, and I know you're going to do right by him. So that's how he brought him to me. He came to my on the radar training. He was working out with me in the summer. I seen the potential. So, yes, Pat was good when I seen him. Um, obviously, I sprinkled, you know, the radar effect and did what I do <laughs> to, to tighten him up and get him, you know, better, along with the help from Ricky and everybody that's been in his life. But um, we um, definitely put the work in, and it's, it's, it's come to what you see now, which is a huge improvement over the years and um, a special kid, a special talent. So shout out to everybody. No doubt. Hey, listen, hold on. Anyway, can't answer that right now. Uh, now, let me just prepare y'all for what y'all about to see on Tuesday. I don't think y'all have ever seen what y'all about to face on Tuesday. I'm going to keep it a buck. I think you guys is good. I think this other team is good. But what they bring to the table, and this is a shout out to the whole Cougar family. Y'all better show up. The Cougar family, y'all better show up. Because if y'all don't show up, that Regis crowd is going to be bananas. They have the best fans in all of New York City. They do. They do. I'm telling you. Hands down? Hands down. Pretty good, Coach. When I'm telling you, it's going to be a college atmosphere, March Madness atmosphere on Tuesday. Why do you think the PSL, the Catholic School, saved that game for last? Music it's a reason. My ass. I like oh. I like to hear stuff like that. I'm about to get on the Cougar line and and highlight everybody near and far to make sure that they did Tuesday night. That's right, Coach. It is going to be a madhouse in there on Tuesday. <laughs> when I'm telling you, Regis is it. going to bring that whole crew, and they're led by uh, Brandon O'Keefe, who is the Player of the Year in the B Division. Yeah, I'm very familiar with him. Yeah, he knows me. He knows me very well personally. His dad knows me very well. His uncle. Those are my guys over there, so See, it's gonna familiar. be a, it's gonna be a reunion. We've go. been in the gym together, me, Brendan, this pops. We all been in the gym together. Good. So it's, it's, it's definitely nothing but love on that side, but we come, we coming, we coming real yeah, strong. They, 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 they saying it, they saying it. We ready. We in the, listen. I'm telling y'all, Cougar Nation, y'all better be in this strong. Like when when I go out, I want to see the line around the corner because I'm telling you. Regis has, and no knock to anybody else, they got some of the best fans. These young kids come out, and they come out like they're at Duke, right? <laughs> <laughs> they just doing all this. It's, it's crazy. So, um, well, how about, I, how, how about this, Paul? How about you send this live? How about you send this little interview? You send this to my principal, my assistant <laughs> principal, everybody in the building. They can't tell me no when I ask for 10 buses to get all my kids out there. They there you go. I'm going to forward, no. forward the live to you. I'm going to forward the live <laughs> to you. And, and you know what I'm saying? You get it to everybody. We'll tell principal to get you 15 buses. Listen, now we're talking. Now we're talking. I'm telling you. Listen, I, 
you know, we don't have no 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 dog in this fight. I'm just telling you, we have represent all New York City basketball. We want to see a great game. We have also offered Brandon to come on the show and uh, reached out to him as well. So this is no knock to them, but I'm telling y'all, Cougar Nation, show up. Because oh, we will. Regis is definitely going to show out. I love it. I love that yeah. energy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is this is gonna be this is gonna be great. It's gonna be great. Hey, coach. Um, yep. let, let's have some fun, coach. Uh, B, let's have some fun real quick. Um, with, with Sir Patrick, and and then I'm gonna come back to coach. Ask him a few more questions. And we'll wrap it up. You got right, it. You got let's it. Let's have some fun. All right. Uh, well, listen. You're getting. I know your family's. Your family's watching because there's comments left and right. So we all want to know. How'd you get started? How'd you get started in basketball, Sir Patrick? Um, I want to give a shout out to um my cousin, and my uncle. His name is Isaiah, and my uncle's name is David. They helped me a lot. My uncle David used to play basketball. He played in Clinton, and I like you know stuff happened. It didn't really work out, but he pushed me every day we used to practice from four in the morning to eight in the morning like we used to do stuff like that every day in the summertime and before i didn't really have a left hand every day they used to scream at me make them they used to stand in the paint make me go up with my left hand for until i get 20 30 in a row left hand layups and they just kept motivating me, pushing me, and I that's why I shot, shot them out because I am who I am because of them, and I got my toughness from them. I love that. Who, I'm going to hit you with a two-part. Who would you say is your biggest fan, and what was, what is your inspiration? Who inspires you, Sir Patrick? My mom. Ma Dukes? Yeah, love. sure. She said, yeah, my mom. She said, <laughs> like, literally, she says me big paragraphs before every game. <laughs> I love that. I love salute that. to mom. <laughs> salute to mom. Absolutely. You can tell this guy comes from a great family. It's so awesome to hear. Uh, who, who do you model your game at, Mr. Patrick? I say, and a lot of people compare me to him, too, DeMar DeRozan. Like mm. before, I never really used to see it until I started really watching and studying the stuff he do. I do a lot of. That's why when I be watch, that's why when I be watching, like, film, I hear them a lot. The Marty Rosen, the Marty Rosen, and yeah. Y'all yeah. got the same hairstyle, fam. Like let's 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 <laughs> let's keep it a buck. Y'all got the same hairstyle too, and, and kind of favor each other. So that's yeah. that's crazy that you said that. I love that. And I mean, I'm so jealous of Demar. He's got the best uh, Kobe collection ever. <laughs> I'm definitely jealous of him. Um, who would you say is the funniest guy on the team? And who has the best impression of Coach? Uh. <laughs> uh, does managers count? Of course. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Anyone in the family? I'm going to have to give it to um, Jeremy. Go, Jeremy. Now, is he, is he the funniest or he does the best impression of a coach? Because he's like the jokester. Like, even sometimes when he's serious, he's just he's just that God and to just make everyone laugh. Yeah. Now, I know, you know, your time is coming to an end. Um, are you looking to go away for college or are you looking to stay more close to home? Um, I'm looking to go away. And have you thought of a major at all? Uh, business. Love it. Economics, business, guys all over. You got any questions, Phil? This guy's killing. Yeah, yeah. Who's the best gamer on the team? <laughs> yeah. Gamer? Uh, not to see me. Yo, hold on. <laughs> Tell I love Tell the kids so much, man. Every kid comes on to say the same thing. <laughs> the best I, game I need course. to have a kid tournament between you, Caden Mingo, Stores. All you guys are the best gamers in the world. It's unbelievable. 
Yeah, yeah you got to put them all in the chat and make them play each other because these no, guys yeah. argue all day about these damn games. <laughs> I, in no, practice and study hall, I'm like, shut up about the games, man. <laughs> <laughs> and then obviously Pooh wants to know, who is the hype man on the team? Who's the best dancer that's getting everybody going pregame? <laughs> I'm going to have to say Tristan. Tristan, yeah, Mr. Hip, Mr. Hipsticker. <laughs> He, he, he hit the hips and all. Uh, he, oh, he's 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 um he's pretty famous on TikTok. He just won't stop. Nice, <laughs> nice. I knew I knew he was gonna. I knew the TikTok was coming up eventually. It had to, right? It had to come up. Yeah. <laughs> nah, nah. This is you this guys is did cool. an awesome job. Go ahead, Pooh. What do you got for coach? Uh, coach, I, I want you to tell everybody right now, especially all these college coaches, why they should have Sir Patrick on a radar and what he brings to the table besides being a, a, a great scorer. Um, all the coaches listening, all levels. If you're looking for a player that's determined, that's tough, that's gritty, that's passionate, that's dedicated, that's committed, that wants it just as much as you want it as a coach, you shouldn't look any further than Sir Patrick, other than the fact that he's a prolific scorer, um, a great teammate, a motivator, and just a wonderful kid on and off the court. Special. Sir Patrick, give me something about your coach that will stick with you forever. Give you something about my coach? Uh... Just how he pushes us, like he pushes us, even though he knows when we about to play a team that he knows we're going to be and clip him 30 plus. He doesn't. He always tells us, don't ever underestimate anyone, because, you know, when you see teams like all in 12, stuff like that, he always tells us. It don't matter who you're playing against. Always play them like they're the top. Like they're the top dogs because you never know. And he always tells us everybody always plays hard and plays their best every time they play him. He tells us that a lot. And we just take heed to that and stay focused and never try to underestimate anyone because everyone is capable of doing something. That's right. That's right. Hey, coach, before we get out of here, I want you to give, um, let everybody know when you do your workouts, where we're at, and, and when would you be starting them? All right. And then um, I, I want you to give a special big shout out to your Cougar Nation and let them know why they should pull up on Tuesday. All right. So, first, give, you know, the word, uh, radar workouts and then speak to your Cougar Nation real quick. All right, so uh, my on the radar training workouts, they uh, usually begin in the summer. Um, but I'm going to start two Saturdays from now. I'm going to start doing workouts at uh, Mount Haven High School um, from one to four. Um, so two Saturdays from now, we'll be doing workouts. And then um, in the summer, Starlight Park, right on 174th, right under the bridge on 174th, close to Bronx River Houses. Um, that's where I'm from. So we'll be working out there. And then, you know, Cougar Nation. Y'all heard what he said. Regis is going to be deep. They're going to be extra loud. They're going to be ready, rooting their team on. And I need Cougar Nation to be out there full force, just as hungry, just as supportive, and help us will another championship back to the Cougars then. Thank you. No doubt, no doubt, no doubt. So... Listen, we appreciate uh, you guys for, for coming in and chopping with us. Uh, I thought this show went well. You guys is excellent. And thank you to everybody in the chat for, for pulling up. Um, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Everyone is allowed to share this information. You can clip it, do what you want with it. It's all good. Um, just let them know you got a high school basketball weekly, baby. The number one high school show in New York City. 
um, and basketball heads. This is what we do. Coach, coach, listen, I'm going to be in contact with you because I, I want to get some more Bronx legends up here, right? I want to get for some sure. more Bronx legends up here. Those guys who put it in uh, from the street level to high school, you know, college, and even the NBA. All of those guys, I know you're connected to them. And Absolutely. You know, we're going to get some more Bronx guys on the show to show so, you know, the, the older guys some love, man. So thank you both for coming on. Thank, thank you. Also, one more thing, boo. Yes, yes. I know yes, I, yes. I know. I gave out information real quick. Uh -huh. But, um, you know, everyone can follow me on On The Radar 3 and On The Radar Training and South Bronx Prep Hoops. And more information about On The Radar Training will be displayed on my IG page. So... Uh, just stay tuned, and thanks again for all my supporters. Thank you, Pooh. Thank you, uh, Coach. I appreciate all of y'all giving us this platform to speak on our program, speak on uh, New York City basketball, speak on uh, our student athletes. So we definitely appreciate that. No doubt. And you can follow my guy. Tell them, Patrick, where they can find you at, man. Let's get those followers up. You can follow me on Instagram at d1bound.surge. And you can find me on TikTok, same thing, and Twitter, same thing. No doubt. I think I think that's a wrap, fellas. Great job, fellas. Appreciate you coming on. Thank you. Thank you. Thank All you. right, take care. All right. By the way, shout out all the Livingston clan in this uh, they are episode, man. They're everywhere. Shout they're them packed. Out. Yes, 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 yes. And, Shout and out how to great was it that you actually got to see a kid as he's talking about his coach? And I'm sitting back as a former coach, seeing the ultimate thing, Pooh. Like he's realizing that he's coaching, he's helped coaching his guys while he's on the floor with his teammates. Like that's what every coach wants. A team that's holding each other accountable, a team that's coaching each other and trusting each other. And it was so awesome to see, man. They're building something special. That's going to be some game. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's going to be a madhouse in there. I can't wait. I would definitely have, you know, my seat front row and center checking out the whole thing. Um, but the, the one thing I definitely want to say too, right? You, you, you love to see the love and commitment that a coach has, right? And, a, yeah. and, and then a player that's able to buy in to, to the process. Completely. Figure out his space, right? And, and reach his highest potential. So, and man, Pooh could have bailed, right? Failed that's right. Could have bailed. Could have that's took right. the easy way out and said, you know, I'm going to run somewhere else, start over, blah, blah, blah. Not have to worry about academics at another place. But said, no, I made a mistake. I'm going to fix it. And I'm not letting it happen again. So, uh, you know, as tough as that lesson is, and it's tough, you know, I was a former teacher. You know, I would, it would take a lot for me to have to do that to a kid. But um, good to see them bounce back from that and, and really move forward. Yeah. And, and look, when it's all said and done, who knows? You know, he's definitely one of three finalists for basketball heads. True. Public school player of the year. Right, he could pull off. He pull this off, man. It, it, it's going to be crazy. Right, Definitely so get a lot of points if they could cap this season off with this win. Because yeah, this, this is this, no this joke. Say a lot. This going to say a lot right here. You get this win, you know, it's saying a lot. And and salute to everybody, Cougar Nation. We appreciate everybody. Make sure you subscribe, share this content, and put the city on notice. Right, South Bronx Prep. It's definitely in the building. Hey, there's a lot of quality teams in this league, Pooh, right? At every level. Every level, there's guys, not just the top. Tons of quality kids at these lower levels. They just – they don't get enough shine. I mean, look at the stats in the PSAL. This kid's in every stat column. I mean, yeah, no joke. And like Pooh said, doubles, boxing ones, zones, switching, hedging, blitzing, everything this kid's seen. Everything. First of all, he he's averaging right now. Uh, so in a regular season, he's averaging thirty-one points, and in the playoffs, he's averaging forty. That's sick. Just think of that. That's sick. Seventy-four percent for the free throw uh, in the regular season. Uh, Seventy-five percent for the free throw land. That's crazy. Y you know, he's stacking up on assists. Four point uh, eight. Six. Yeah. 
right? Let's miss a game, score. three yeah. in the playoffs, seven rebounds. He's doing everything. Yeah, when I wrote about him earlier in the year, I was stunned when I saw some of the numbers that he was putting up. I mean, monster numbers. Uh, you know, very cool to see. And, you know, definitely a terrific program. And, and Coach did a great job, too. Um, he's definitely one of the stars uh, in the PSAL that doesn't get talked about enough. No, nah, no, nah, definitely. Uh, the way he walks the sidelines, he's always suited and booted, you yeah. know, looking, looking sharp. And, and his, his kids respect him. Right, because that's what you want to see. And you know, kids gotta understand that you know, you got people on the outside that watch everything. We watch everything, we watching the demeanor, we watching how you communicate with your coach, we watching the facial expressions, we're watching everything, we watching body language. All of those things matter if you want to play at the next level. A hundred percent. You couldn't have said it any better. And I I've told you stories on here before where a guy walked by me, a D1 coach. Walked by me in warm-ups, and I said, where are you going? And he said, I already saw things I don't want to see. In a, in a layup line, in a layup line. You know, talking to the crowd, not focused. Everyone's watching you. And like I always tell every kid that I've ever spoken to, wants to play in college, wants to be evaluated, you never know who's watching you for the first time. You never know. Right. Right. Well, um, before we get out of here, I, I, I'm going to play – let me see if I could get this here on the screen real quick. Uh, no, no, they won't let me. Why they won't let me? Why they won't let me? By the way, no no mysterious emails, right? No cancellations so far. We're all good to go. <laughs> we, we're, we're good to go. We're good to go. We're good to go. No last minute, no last minute cancellations. Down to this one. Down to this one. They got they got too I much. Mean, do I need to call the PSA office before I leave my house? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, hold on. Let me see if I can get this on the screen. I was trying to get this on the screen, fam. They 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 won't let me get this on the screen. Well, anyway, y'all know what it is. New York City, everybody out there that's watching, pull up Tuesday, right? And you got the games today. We got games today, right, as well. Um, in the PSL, going to see uh, who's this right here. We got... Today, 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 you got Brooklyn Lawn Tech versus Catholic John Kennedy, uh, John F. Kennedy Catholic. Uh, that's at six o'clock, and then at eight o'clock, you got Eagle Academy in Brooklyn versus Archbishop Stepanak. That's going to be crazy. Monday, you got Epic South versus Mousy uh, McClancy. And then Tuesday, you got High School of Construction, girls versus Cardinal Spellman girls. And then the grand finale, the last game of the season, South Great. Bronx Prep versus Regis. Probably the best for last two. I there mean, you go. And then, Pooh, I got a question. The winner of Stepanek and the PSAL, I mean, an Eagle, Goes on to play again, correct? Nope, that's it. Oh, oh yeah, no, no, they play in the throne, right? They play in the throne tournament. tournament. The throne tournament. Tournament. tournament, yes, they play in the throne tournament. You know who they who they would play yet or no? Nah, not at all. Okay. Not at all. I wasn't sure. I wasn't sure with everything going on, what they were doing with that. So nope. All right, so the winner will move on. So there will be a little bit more hoops, but league play will officially be done. So there you go. That's it. Well, again, I'd like to give a special shout out again to, to people who showed me so much love yesterday. Uh, Trinity Girl Restaurant, thank you. Thank you again for showing that me so much so love. Cool. Appreciate so cool. you. It's on 628 Nostrand Avenue uh, between Dean Street and Pacific. I'm just showing love. No more, no less. Yeah, well, man. Let's get out of here. Listen, if anybody wants to sponsor the show, contact me or my guy Brian. We'll make sure we make it happen and you become official sponsor of High School Basketball Weekly. 
Don't let don't let Pooh don't let Pooh get too big before you start doing it, man. Like he said, he's gonna be in charge. He's gonna be too big by then. No, nah, they it, it, once that happened, they got paid like they weigh, baby. They got paid like they weigh. <laughs> All right, coach. We out of here. All right. See you later, Pooh. Peace.